physical of injuries and poor play have made him fighting mad. Veteran players like Neil Lomax are feeling the pressure. The Cardinals are angry. And it's spectacular weather for football. The Giants coming in here with a three-game winning streak, a game off the pace set by the Washington Redskins in the NFC East, and St. Louis right now resides in the basement. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender along with the coach, Hank Stram. And, Hank, Gene Stalling still hasn't posted that first NFL win. They've done some things well, but they seem to self-destruct by making mistakes. You know, going into this game, uh, Gary, this is going to be very much of an attitude game, I think, because the last time the New York Giants played here, they beat the Cardinals 34 to 3, and they left town saying that the St. Louis Cardinal team quit. Every man on the St. Louis Cardinal team that I talked to mentioned that, and they said, We'll see what they say after this game this afternoon. Thank the Giants, as I mentioned, have won three in a row, but Bill Parcells told us he still isn't happy with this team. I think anytime that you're winning, Gary, I think that's the attitude that the head coach must take. He has to make it tougher and tougher on his team because I think when you win, you can say anything, do anything, and it's going to be very effective. But but that's a very, very good approach on his part. And so under spectacular skies, the Giants will be kicking off. The Cardinals have won the toss they've elected to receive. And St. Louis, 0-4, have not led at any time in any game. And you can add to that graphic that they have not scored this year in the first quarter of play. So they have not gotten out of the dressing room to the start of the games very effectively. Raul Allegra will be kicking off for the Giants. Safety's back for the Cardinals. Sakihima is back there. He's joined by Dan Fox, and Fox will bring it out close to the 30-yard line. So Neil Lomax will set it up now for St. Louis. Lomax suffering four interceptions Monday night against the Dallas Cowboys, six for the year. His attempts, you can see, second in the NFC. Defensively, Jim Burke in the middle. He's one of the favorite players of Bill Parcells. He says he never disappoints me. Banks and Taylor, they are absolutely as a tandem as good as anybody you'll ever see. Mark Collins coming back to start in place of Elvis Patterson, who has a growing problem. You know, I wouldn't be best surprised to see him start with a pass of some kind just to keep the giant defense loose. I don't know what they're going to do. Let's see what they do. From the 30-yard line now, Lomax has Chaz Fox in motion. Looking that way, it's J.T. Smith. And Smith is going to get a first down to the 43-44 yard line. Harry Carson over there to make the stop. Offensively, let's look at the St. Louis team. Earl Farrell has just been superb in the early going. They think he's the most underrated back in the NFL. And up front, this is a very capable offensive line. Lewis Sharp is their best pass blocker, number one draft pick in 1982. You call it, they came out throwing. Well, I think it was a high percentage kind of a pass, and uh, I think, you know, they, they want to run the ball, basically, but I think maybe they just thought they'd try something uh, from a uh, consistent standpoint, get something started, and go from there. First down now to 43. Fox in motion, Lomax, going to get to O.J. Anderson, and Anderson across the 45 to the 46. Anderson has had a great deal of success against this giant team in years past. He's had five 100-yard rushing days as Gary Reason's in on the tackle. You know, I think any time that you play the Giants, they have such great linebackers that really you don't know where to run. And I, uh, judging from what the people have done in the past and what they feel they can do, I think Carl Banks is playing so well that it's very difficult to run at him, too, just like it is t very difficult to run at Taylor. Hank, when you talk about the Giants, everybody talks about those linebackers, don't they? From the 45 now, second down eight, Lomax, Chase, get off to the near side to Farrell and almost intercepted. Mark Collins had a crack at the deflected ball. That was Banks who came through, the man you just mentioned, Hank, that got in the face of Neil Lomax. He's playing terrifically well, has good range, and a, a very tough at the point of attack. I don't know. I think basically... Uh, it might be better to run to the tight end side on Taylor's side than it is on Banks because he has really been terrifically outstanding against the run. Well, what Taylor does so well, Hank, is he comes from that backside so quickly. That's right. You, I think, regards where you run, you have to have somebody on Taylor, and whether you block him or make him run around people, at least you detain his course pursuing the running back. See the cards having a tough time on third down, and that's what this is, third and seven. Stump Mitchell now in. Mitchell missing the Monday night game. Lomax stepping up. 
And really nobody open. J.T. Smith the closest to the football. The Giants did a great job that time of camouflaging their coverage. They, they wanted Lomax to think that they were going to blitz him. They were all on the line of scrimmage. They made him change the play at the line of scrimmage. And then in the snap of the ball, they ran back and played zone defenses. It really confused Lomax, and that's why he threw the ball poorly. And I think to add to that, Hank, is Lomax is struggling a little bit confidence-wise, and so you might mix it up a little bit. I think I think that's very obvious. Bill McConkey, who has just reacquired this year from the Packers, will accept the punt from Evan Rapasasis, and it's not a particularly good kick. McConkey at the 25, will bring it out to the 30, and he had a running area, and all of a sudden it closed down at the 34. The Giants will have it there. Stafford Mays up to make the stop, and Phil Sims will come in. He's thrown a touchdown pass in nine straight games. He's been spectacular in the last two years. That was only a 31-yard punt. Watch David Galloway. He's the key defensively for the Cardinals. He played very well Monday night. E.J. Jr. is the leader at linebacker. And Leonard Smith. Coach Gene Stallings has been pleased with this play. Solomon Miller goes in motion. Joe Morris, he's going nowhere. That was Smith who came through and help arrives. Bubba Baker, number 60, is there. There'll be a loss back to the 31, and they were sending that secondary. So Morris, who did not play last week, due to that reaction to some medicine he took for his broken nose, on his first carry, loses yardage. And as uh, Bill Parcells told us, he wants to get him in gear today, get him back to the level of play that he had in 1985. And up front, Billy Ard in the estimation of Coach Parcells is his most consistent lineman, and Bavaro's leading the NFC in receptions. We saw Leonard Smith came up and make that tackle that time. Solomon He's like Miller. a linebacker. Solomon Miller was shaken up. As you know, Lionel Manuel is out, so they're getting a little thin at that wide receiver spot. Get to Morris on a second and 12, and again, the Cardinals are there. St. Louis reacting very well, and teams have been running against the Cardinals very easily prior to this game. Watch a draw play, and he starts to go to his right side, but it caves in on the back side, and Charlie Baker finally comes in from the back side and makes a tackle along with a lot of other people, but uh, the response to that run was very good, and I think somewhere early in the game, Gary, I think the Giants are going to have to run some kind of a misdirection play, a reverse of some kind to slow down that pursuit. Third down, 12 yards to go. From the shotgun goes Phil Sims. There's just nobody breaking open. McConkey closest to the football. Lionel Washington defending well. That's got to be encouraging for the Cardinals, Hank. They played this series very well. Well, you know, talking all their plays, they think that they're very capable of stopping the Giants from a defensive standpoint. The problem has been they haven't been able to maintain or establish any kind of a consistent flow offensively. So as a result, for them to get a, a, a jump of this game, if they expect to, they've got to do something with their specialty teams in their defense. Landetta, very fine punt by Sakahima. where it should be caught number high, catches it with his hands. Look at this. He sees a gap. And the nice thing about it is he's very decisive. He makes a decision and goes with it, uh, avoids a would-be tackler right there, gets another 30 yards on the run, and does a great job on the return. First and 10, St. Louis. A 61-yard return to the 22. Sikahima was third in the NFC in punt returns, and that certainly will help his average. Cardinals with excellent field position. Lomax to O.J. Anderson. Running behind Farrell, and he got maybe two yards to the 20-yard line. Carson and Carl Banks made the stop. Sikahima, an interesting story. He was born on the island of Tonga. Came over to the United States, went to BYU, and uh, he was one of those guys, Hank, that always wants the football. He's a competitor. He dances every dance. And the guys in the team love him because he know they know that every time he's in a ball game, any time he gets his hands on the football, there's always a chance for him to make something happen. He told me that they don't see the game in Tonga. He said it takes two days to get there if you fly. 
Second down now eight. You understand it was a turf burn suffered by Solomon Miller. On the 20 yard line, Lomax to Anderson. Earl throws a block. Anderson trying to get to the 15. He's got that. And he negotiates the 10 into the eight yard line area. And Anderson, when he gets those shoulders turned up the field, he is a load to tackle. He weighs 230 pounds. Kennard over to make the stop. First down, St. Louis. Hank, this is without question the best start of the year for the Cardinals. They've had absolutely nothing go well for them early in any game. Well, the great thing, the challenge you have, even though you have good field position and create a great opportunity for your team, the challenge is to get points on the scoreboard. That's what you have to do. Get seven in this particular situation. And if you don't get seven, at least get three. But in here, at this situation, they've got to be working for seven. First and goal down from the seven. Carroll and Anderson are running backs. Jazz Fox to the bottom of the screen. J.T. Smith to the top. This time, no place to go. Excellent reaction. Leonard Marshall, number seven, he got penetration that time. It was a counter, a counter play. And any time a delay, you better hold your blocks for a long period of time. So you watch the off guard and the tackle pulling and look at Marshall get penetration and knocks all three of them down in the backfield. As you know, probably, the Giants are tied with the Bears first in rushing defense, allowing under 70 yards a game. And there is Marshall, who was spectacular a year ago with 15 and a half sacks. Bill Parsons said that he just felt I can do it. Got the confidence and he did exactly that. Second down now in goal. Outside the 10. Anderson gets a big block. And he'll make it to the five-yard line. It'll be third and goal from that point. Kenny Hill, the strong safety up to make the stop for the Giants. You know, usually that's a tough play to run against the New York Giants because you bring the ball from the left side of the formation all the way over to the right side. And by the time you get there, usually that whole defensive team is right there to greet you. But in spite of that, he was able to pick up some yardage on the play. Some changes being made. Gene Stallings says we just have been self-destructive all year long. We get the ball moving, then we have a costly penalty. And right now, he hopes they can execute well here on third and goal from the five. We might see a play action pass here back to the back side away from the formation. Nope, here he is. There he goes. Lomax in trouble though. Leonard Taylor, Lawrence Taylor, I should say, was there. And that is the thing that he did last week, Hank, against New Orleans. They could not get outside on him. Boy, he is murder. See a play action fake. Watch 56 now. He's down a three-point stance. And look at they're trying to block him on the outside, but in spite of that, he grabs the quarterback and throws him right down to the turf. Great play by Lawrence Taylor, number 56. Now the Cardinals have really been struggling in this next department. Field goal kicking. The rookie, John Lee, is two of six. He had one block Monday. Kent Austin will hold, and this will be a 30-yard field goal attempt. Lee needs some confidence. This kick on the way, and John Lee is able to hit it. His third field goal to go through, and John Lee, who has just lost his confidence to the point where he says the goalposts have just shrunk, hits that one, and the Cardinals lead it. The all-time leading rushers, you know about Peyton Brown and Franco Harris, along with John Riggins, O.J., Tony Dorsett. But did you know that a man in this game is in the number 11 spot? Otis Anderson. Hank, he really hasn't gotten a lot of credit for the fine career he's had with St. Louis. I think it's typical of what happens when you don't win consistently. I think he was on the verge of being recognized around the country, and then they went back the other way, and for that reason, he hasn't been given the credit that he really deserves. Mark Collins will bring it out. He brings it out to the 31-yard line, and the Giants trailing 3 to nothing will set it up. Carl Carter made the stop. Otis, thus far in this game, has gained 23 yards, and before the day is over, he needs a total of 56 yards to get to 8,000. So there's a couple of standards he's going after today. I don't think people realize how big and strong he is. You know, he's a very powerful guy with good, good uh, speed, and he's 6'2 and about 230. From the 31, Bill Sims with a lot of protection on target to Bobby Johnson. And Johnson takes it inside the Cardinal 40-yard line. Bobby Johnson played his high school football just across the river in East St. Louis, Illinois. They execute a play action fake here. Uh, not very good fake. They didn't put the ball in the belly of the, the deep back, but he runs a crossing pattern. Bobby Johnson coming over from the right side to his left. 
He's wide open in the seam, be, 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 be in front of the defensive backs and also behind the linebackers. Nice looking play. Not much of a pass rush on the play either. Man shaken up is Stacy Robinson. Robinson, the other wide receiver. They'll look him over after that 30 yard completion. First down when we come back. Stacy Robinson's okay. The fastest receiver the Giants have. He's on the far sideline. Bill Parcells has built this giant team into a contender, a chance to get all the way to Pasadena. It started very slowly, however. If he'd win today, he would have his career record at 500. The first year was a tough one, and the last two years they've been in double digits victory wide. Yeah. A little bit of difficulty. Teddy Joe Nunn was there. First round draft pick a year ago out of Mississippi. He drops him, and there'll be a loss back outside to the 46-yard line. Freddie Joe Nunn, number 53, blitzing on the play. Was a little hesitant that time, and then finally started to come. Look at Baker, number 60, being blocked by two guys. There's there's Freddie Joe Nunn, number 53, coming in from the inside and making the sack on Phil Sims. They wanted better pass rush. They got it there. Nunn has been a little confused by this new system. And they wanted him to just forget about some of the mechanics and play football. He did there. Straight ahead comes the big fullback, Maurice Parthon. He'll advance to the 40. They're still going to be 10 yards short of the first down. Carthon, in the estimation of Bill Parcells, is a single wing type player. He just goes out and knocks people down. Yeah, he's a very good blocker and a straight ahead runner. And, uh, you know, he's the kind of a guy that's got enough strength and will go into a pile and come out the other end a lot of the time. And that's what he did in the last play. Leave some bodies strewn along the way, huh? Well, they're keying more so much that uh, he'll sneak in there and make some good runs. Third down, a little more than 10 to go. like the Cardinals may call timeout. What were they doing? No, no. I think I, It's hard to tell, but it looks like they were trying to confuse Sims and make him think they were going to blitz when they weren't. But they made him delay the game, and as a result, they got five yards. A great job on the part of the St. Louis Cardinals of camouflaging their defense and making the quarterback change the play when he really didn't have to. You know what it was happening? It was interesting on that, though, Hank, is that Lonnie Young was signaling like he wanted that, indicating and probably fouling up Sims even more. But anyway, the five-yard penalty makes it third and 16. Just outside the 45. Sims with time. And almost a remarkable catch by McConkie. McConkie couldn't quite hang on. McConkie, by the way, is playing with a cut forehead, and we'll develop that story. Did you hear the story last night? We'll talk about it, Hank, in just a moment. You know, he really throws this ball exactly where it should be thrown with the coverage the way it was. He steps up into the pocket, throws it right down between the hash marks, and he makes a diving catch. And really, really, it looked like the ground created the fumble again that time. It looked like he had possession when he hit the ground and bounced out. Vendetta with the punt, trying to angle it to the far side, and it's going to make it in for the touchdown. So the Cardinals now will have it at the 20-yard line. They also have a 3-0 lead. That was a 45-yard punt. You know, Landetta has averaged 44.9, and watching him kick in pregame and watching him in movies, he drops the ball as well as anybody I've seen. Hank, here's the guy you were talking about that drops the ball so well on his foot. You know, I talked to him before the game, and I asked him, what is the most important thing, do you feel, that with because of the successes you'd, you'd have enjoyed, and he said, dropping the ball. Now, that time he dropped it <laughs> uh, against the Bears. Nobody's perfect, right? Yeah, but the, you know, the wind was so bad that time, he didn't hold on to it long enough, and it blew it right out of his hand. That was that NFC title game of the Bears. At the 20 now, the Cardinals with a 3-0 lead. Peril in motion. Double pump by Lomax, trying to get to Chaz Fox, a collision with Mark Collins, but there's no penalty flag. Here's one of those indications, Hank, where you wonder if they are really hooking up well. Fox hasn't been in camp that long. Well, they hardly even know each other. You know, he gets to see Washington. Now, Collins gets good position on him, turns to the inside, then they get tripped up on the play, uh, but certainly no pass interference justified uh, on the call. Where have all the wide receivers gone? Pat Tilly, Roy Green out. 
longest any of these wide receivers have been camped 12 days. I think for that reason, I think the Cardinals have to spend a lot more time throwing to their backs than to their outside receiver. That's Chaz Fox in motion, second down 10. Anderson will be dropped short of the 25-yard line. That's Andy Hedden, 54, the former Clemson standout who made the tackle. Carl Banks, number 58, the left linebacker, really did a, a number on Doug Marsh, who was trying to block him. He just shed the block and threw him off like he was a little paper dog. Third down now, six yards to go for the Cardinals. The St. Louis offensive line has protected Lomax this year. They gave up so many sacks, 65 a year ago, 10 going into this game. And they've run fairly effectively. It's an area that's improved, but record-wise hasn't helped. for the first down. He'll get out to the 35-yard line. And Mitchell, who's been playing with a knee that's had some drainage problems, really showed some excellent outfield, outside running. Kenny Hill making the stop now at the 35. You know what Bill Parcells said? He said, I'll take stop. I'll put him on the plane and take him back with me to New York. I got a little news for you. Yes, any coach in the National Football League and any coach in any league, and they'll all say the same thing about Stump Mitchell. And talking to him yesterday, I said, you know, how efficient do you think you're going to be from a percentage standpoint, 100 percent, 90? He said, right now, about 80 percent effective, but I'll play tomorrow. That's pretty good 80 percent on that last run, huh? Ten-yard pickup, just short of the 35. Earl Farrell moving the pile a couple of yards to the 37-yard line. Farrell battling back from some personal problems a year ago has been a bright spot at that fullback spot. He weighs 225 pounds. He's a little lighter today. I think he's had a bad case of the flu. And uh, he's, he's, of course, he's playing anyhow, but he doesn't feel too well. Is that your, uh, your analysis as a doctor, that he might be a little lighter? Well, he told me that yesterday. I think any time he had the flu, you're going to lose 8 to 10 pounds. Back it down. Seven yards to go. Have the ball strip gets to the 44 yard short of the first down. Let's go to New York now. Here's Brent Musburger. Well, Gary George Rogers hit his former New Orleans teammates with this touchdown. His seventh of the year rushing and the eighth straight game that he has scored for the Redskins. Skins lead 7 0. Let's go back to Gary and Hank. Hank, we keep hearing about how good the Redskins are. They're going to be, what, a yard short, third down coming up with the 44. St. Louis with a 3 0 lead. Three and a half minutes to go in this first quarter. Remember now, the Cardinals are the worst third down conversion percentage in the NFL. Let's see if they run up the middle this time. The linebackers were a little off. A lot of congestion, but Anderson with a spinning move very close to that first down. Just short of the 45-yard line. You know, as tough as those linebackers are on the outside, the middle linebackers are tough, too. But at least they give you a little room. It looks like the most efficient place to run in that situation because the linebackers were off about a yard and a half, would have been run right up the center and try to get as much as you possibly could. Giants last week against the Saints held the Saints to one first down and 13 yards in total offense in the second half. Playing as well as you can play defensively, and it looks like and they do have the first down. Linebackers, you can say a lot about them, but up front they're tough. They're very, very physical. The Cardinals talking about that when you come out of a game with the Giants, you feel a little extra bump and bruise from them because their ability to swarm and come after you. Just short of the 45 now. First down, St. Louis. Fox comes to the bottom of the screen. J.T. Smith to the top. That's Farrell and Anderson in the backfield. play. Lomax and Anderson kind of dancing around back there. Lawrence Taylor then ended that in a hurry back at the 40-yard line. This reminder, game two of our NFL doubleheader. Most of you will see the undefeated Broncos led by John Elway take on Herschel Walker and the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas and Denver coming up next on CBS. We understand that Danny White was hurt in practice on Thursday, has a hip flexor, and will not play in today's game. to go. Lomax, pressure 
coming from the blind side and everywhere. It goes back to the 26-yard line. Carl Banks. But first it was Taylor who was storming from the back side, and then Banks came in. You know, that kind of a call is tough, uh, Gary, because it's a play-action pass, long yardage. Those linebackers, if they're blitzing, you know, they're not going to slow down any. It's tough to pick them up with the backs, and as a result, they get penetration. And by the time the quarterback is ready to throw after making a fake, school's out, the stadium falls in on it. I think Lomax fell all of that. That's a loss of 14 yards, third and 29. It's a good point, though, Hank. Sometimes all that is just a... Uh... Yeah, you might, third and 14, they know you're going to throw the ball. You might as well get back in the pocket and throw it. This time, he'll go from the shotgun. He might run something from the shotgun just to get better field position for the button up. Leonard Marshall did not get back. Penalty flight, and Lomax gets dropped again. This is George Martin, the veteran. And I believe Marshall coming from the right-hand side, did not get back before the ball was snapped. Martin, who made that sack, in the estimation of Bill Parcells, they just can't do it without him. He is such a venerable veteran. You know, also, when you play against the New York Giants, as great as that defense is, I think you got to keep them off balance by keeping track of what your count is on the sideline to make sure the quarterback is aware that he doesn't go all, always go in the same count. I think you have to use quick counts and then go on two, go on one, go on four, but to keep them off balance. But if you're not careful, the personality of the quarterback is that he gets in a rut. Outside number 70 defense. The penalties will offset. We will repeat the down. See, they go on two so much that uh, the defense gets the rhythm, and before the quarterback can get back and get set, you know, he gets shot. Shot down by the defensive lineman. You can see both these teams have uh, sustained numerous penalties. Atlanta leading the league. Dubious distinction. So it's still third down and 29 from the 26-yard line. 3 nothing St. Louis. The difference, a 30-yard field goal by John Lee. Protection off to Stump Mitchell makes it move at the 35, and he's going to struggle across the 40. He's still going to be way short of the first down. But Stump Mitchell, who has his heart as big as anybody playing this football game, made a lot out of nothing. He's got a big Valentine, I guarantee you that. You got to love the way he plays. If he could only do something about develop his legs, I kidded him yesterday. I said, You ought to you ever think about getting your legs pumped up a little bit? <laughs> about an 18 inch calf. So on a fourth and 14, Rapostasis will go back to punt the football from the 26 yard line. You know, Evan doesn't like to ever try to kick the ball straight down the middle. He likes to kick it out of bounds whenever he can. He hit this one high. McConkey is back. And we have an interference. Flying down the field with Cedric Mack made contact before McConkey had a chance to catch the football. You got to provide him with an opportunity to make the signal for the fair catch or catch the ball. That time he had no chance whatsoever. Cedric Mack, number 47, gives him a shot. Here you see him. The ball is coming down. Here it is. Still coming down. And right about the time it's bang, look at the shot he gets on him by Cedric Mack, 47. Opportunity to make the catch. I want to make a comment about McConkey as mentioning he's playing today. That he's playing with a cut on his forehead. Last night, he was dreaming he caught a football, Hank, jumped up, hit his head on the headboard, sustained the injury, finally woke up. I believe that story, don't you? Yeah, I sure do. Yeah, I got some other ones I'll tell you after the game. <laughs> Bender, Hank Stram, seven seconds to go in the first quarter after that 43-yard punt and then the interference call. The Giants have the ball at their own 32. Sims to Morris. And Morris out to the 35-yard line to pick up a three. It'll be second down seven. Freddie Joe Nunn made the stop. And we have completed the first quarter of play. It's been the best quarter, first quarter of the year for the Cardinals, who lead it three to nothing. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Miller Highlight. Miller, made the American way since 1855. Mitsubishi Motors, experience the sensation of a full line of new cars and trucks from Mitsubishi. 
and by the investment firm of Smith Barney. They make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. One thing that Bill Parcell said to us, he didn't want to give the Cardinals any success early. Three to nothing is some success for St. Louis. Well, it is. It's a lot of success for them because they play so poorly in the first part of all the games they've played. But they're very capable. They just have to have to play like they're playing and not make mistakes. And it'll be a good game. As we start the second quarter on a second down seven, straight ahead comes Joe Morris. Checking the possession in the first quarter. St. Louis, 11 minutes plus. They would have liked to have gotten that touchdown on that one drive, but it, they did get a field goal out of it, and that's a victory the way things have been going. Yeah, but that's, you know, you're a half a play out of being uh, back in a football game talking about the Giants. Third down, four yards to go. When you get good field position, you got to get seven. Tim's over the middle, and that'll be a first down catch by Tony Galbraith. There's a guy you're familiar with, Hank, Tony Galbraith. You drafted him when you were the coach of the Saints. That was the year he had Thunder and Lightning, Chuck Muncy and Tony Galbraith. Well, he was Thunder, and uh, Muncy was Lightning. But you know the thing about uh, Galbraith, you fall into a pattern. He's got such great hands. He's got hands like Otis Taylor, feet like Mike Garrett, and he's a terrific runner from the I formation, but he's been such an outstanding receiver that people kind of overlook the running aspect of it and tell him before the game, he loves what he's doing, but he still loves to run the football. He would like to be able to do more of it. 74 catches in 1979. Here's uh -oh, Sims. Uh -oh. And the catch is made. Nope, they're going to rule it out. Solomon Miller was out of bounds at the 21 yard line. The Miller coming back after that rug burn and twisted neck almost had the grab on the near sideline. Well, they're coming off the ball. He tries to get a bump, and in the process, this process loses a few steps. It's still. Now he makes a mistake. He looks for the ball before he should have, and that's why he lost the opportunity to make a play on the ball was thrown over his head. Had he kept watching the receiver, he would have had a better chance. It doesn't make any difference, however, the ball's out of bounds. So if you were coaching this team, you would bring that to his attention in the film room this week. Well, I bring it before the film room, before then, because he might do it again in this game. <laughs> Those kind of mistakes you should correct as the game progresses. You wait till next week, and it's too late. Let's go to school again here, Coach. There you see. Now watch him look back for the ball. Right there, see? He looks back for the ball too soon. Has no idea where the receiver is. And uh, for that reason, he was open. But unfortunately for the Giants, he didn't have both feet in bounds. And they call it incomplete. And right now we're now waiting because we've wait had a replay on this. Yeah, there. They're, they're playing it back. And that's it, it's a very close call. Art McNally is the replay official. Let's take another look at it. Watch it. Now watch, watch uh, number 48. Look back. Boy, it looks like both feet are in bounds. Well, I tell you what, though, they're not going to give them to it after give it the, the play to them. They're going to stay. Sid say that the play will stay at the 45-yard line. So it's second down and 10. They want to almost convince the other way. Yeah, right? if you get another look at it, it looks like he might have had both of them in. Second and 10. You're coming. That's Charlie Baker, 52. He has been a surprise. They feel that uh, they wanted somebody to beat him out this year, and he's played very effectively for him. Yeah, he was surprised himself that time because nobody touched him. Watch him, number 52. You don't see him, but you, there he is. He comes into the picture. Looked like a screen pass that time, Gary. Nobody even made an attempt to block him. And uh, he had to be surprised on that kind of a play. He sacked uh, Danny White on Monday night. Comes back with another. We understand that the replay was just inconclusive, so they did not give Solomon Miller the reception. That's the word right from the National Football League. Third down now, 19 yards to go. As he said, Art McCalley in charge of the replay today. Here's Sims. In. Oh, he caught it. Ball is loose. Galloway hitting. Bob Clasby had it momentarily. They're still going for it, and the Giants have recovered it at the 30-yard line. That's a bad play. Glassby, number 79, all he had to do was fall in a football and be satisfied for his team to have possession on the plus 30. Instead, he tried to pick it up, and there's no way in, you, in the world you can pick the ball up when it's right down at the bottom of your feet, right below your body. Watch him now. Look at it. See, he tries to pick it up, and then he 
tries to run with it, gets knocked out of his hand, and for that reason, they lose possession. They should have had the ball on the 30-yard line. They're going to get it anyway. It's fourth down. Carl Nelson, offensive tackle for the Giants, recovered for New York. Landetto will punt now from his own 15 on a fourth and 19. Seven years by the Cardinals, and this time he is dropped at the 20 yard line. Did you see that drop that time by Lindetta? A beautiful drop, and that's why it wound up being a great kick. Greg Lasker down to make the stop for the Giants. The Cardinals, with a 3 0 lead, will have it at their 20. St. Louis, a 3 0 lead. They took that lead at the 837 mark of the first quarter. Neil Lomax making his 48th consecutive start today. The unfortunate thing, Hank, is that he hasn't had his wide receivers around that much. He'd like to have them around for 48 straight. That do make it tough. See if they're going to run left here now because of the way they're lined up tight in the left side. No, they're going the other way. Anderson with the carry. Hank, let me talk to you about Lomax a little bit. Here's a guy in 84 that was just nothing short of sensational. He struggled last year. He's struggling this year. When you don't have your wide receivers, you can't get that timing going. It really changes your confidence problem. Well, it changes the execution and uh, changes the efficiency level, but no question about that. You know, Gary, I think all the coaches in the league, they feel that the receivers and quarterbacks should be in during the offseason working on individual routes and timing and techniques. And uh, all of a sudden, you get a new receiver in two or three days. He plays in the game. It's hard to get any kind of a mesh. Second down now, nine yards to go. Well, Max has the protection needed. And the ball is loose, but it's going to be blown dead at the point of impact at the 29-yard line. Doug Marsh, the tight end. Marsh did not catch a pass Monday night, but he's been a very sure-handed receiver. Ten catches for the year. So they'll give him the reception to the 29. He'll still be two yards short, third and two. Luis Sharp that time did a good job of blocking Taylor, and uh, Kennard did a good job of blocking the defensive right end, Marshall. Uh, the the Cardinals are using a variety of ways to block that backside, sometimes with linemen, very seldomly, however, with the back because they think that's a mismatch. And on occasions, they want to go to a left formation to put a tight end on Taylor. Neil Lomax didn't like what he had in the huddle. He has called a timeout for the Cardinals with 10.55 to go in this first half of play. When you play the Giants, you better be aware of that backside. And this offensive line of St. Louis has been hanging in there pretty tough in the early going. Well, Hank, one thing the Cardinals want to avoid was mistakes. Thus far, they've done a pretty good job. Well, they're playing like they're driving a Rolls Royce. They just want to keep it on the highway. Don't go off into the side rolls, into the bushes, any place like Just keep it on the highway, and it'll get there. That's the way they're playing. <laughs> timeout. Lomax sends Anderson in motion off to Farrell. Farrell wants to throw the football, but no opportunity and he's going to be run out of bounds. They had worked on that all week long, but it just didn't materialize. Let's go to New York now. Here's Brent Musburger. Well, Gary, the Bears strike first, and it was set up on this 50-yard pass from Jim McMahon to Keith Ortego. The rookie wide receiver, Walter Payton, then scored his sixth touchdown of the season. Seven to nothing, the Bears lead the Vikings. Let's go back to Gary and Hank. Well, the Bears juggernaut continues, right, Hank? They're already uh, a great football team, no question about that. You win as often as they have won, you've got to be something special. Hopefully on the last play, ran way too deep. Couldn't get the ball to him. Farrell wisely tucked it under his arms. On fourth down now, Rappastathis kicking again. McConkey from the 30. Mack had a crack at him, comes back and eventually makes the tackle at the 35-yard line. We have a penalty flag, however, back at the 30-yard line. thing about the uh, Cardinals or Apostathis has not punted all that well average wise Hank but they like to use him as a kickoff man dual performance and if Lee's field goal kicking comes around they feel that's a good combination yeah, interesting to talk to him yesterday you know where's number 17 and I asked him why we're 17 he said well in, in, 
in college and high school, I was a quarterback, and I wore 17 because my favorite quarterbacks were Jim Hart and Brian Sipe. And he said, I couldn't couldn't believe when I came to the St. Louis Cardinals, I didn't know what number I was going to get. Didn't expect to get 17. Holding, holding. Offense number 56. 10 yards. Repeat the fourth down. But when I checked in to get my uniform and my number, they gave me 17. I almost fainted because I thought that was retired here at St. Louis. And now I'm wearing 17 again, and I'm tickled to death. Maybe they should retire. <laughs> Jim Hart had such a great career here with the Cardinals. But the one thing that uh, Gene Stallings pointed out to us, Hank, is if it Lee doesn't get on track, then they have a difficult time justifying the low average punt-wise. So the combinations change, the mix changes, depending on how well this guy does and also his partner, John Lee. Well, that kind of pressure on him, and it doesn't help his kicking situation much either. <laughs> That's right. Because any time, you know, you play with the idea of hearing the traveling music, you could be in trouble. Traveling music comes in pretty strong sometimes. It's the 46, McConkie. This time, he's going to make it to the outside. To the 40, and McConkey will get to the 34-yard line of St. Louis. Finally, coming over there, the Cardinals able to ram him out after the 37-yard return. Anthony Bell, their number one draft pick, made the stop. Iron Hunt was out in front, number 57, trying to find somebody to block, and like usually happens on a punt return, he didn't find anybody. He was out there blocking air. McConkey with a new life, coming back from Green Bay. The Giants reacquired McConkie for a draft pick from the Packers to fill in because this guy, Mark Collins, really took a shot last week in the New Orleans game. What happened is he had his helmet knocked ajar. He ripped it off himself, tried to return it up the field, and he suffered a mild concussion in that game. So McConkie was added to the roster and is doing the job today. Here is Joe Morris on a first down. Morris inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. One thing that uh, Collins learned, Hank, is even if that helmet is a jar, you better leave it on. You better put a spike in it and nail it down. And after that hit, his mind was like an empty concert hall playing Chinese music. <laughs> Chinese music, huh? Where did he get that? From Cal State Fullerton? They don't have that out there, do they? I don't know. But he thought he might. they might have had it after that shot. Second down, eight yards to go. Johnson, 88 in motion. Sims. The catch by Mark Bavaro, the outstanding tight end, his 26th catch of the year. You talk about toughness. They feel that this guy is as tough as any guy that's playing the football game. And in fact, they call him all jungle. He's even tougher than Tarzan. Well, I talked to him before the game and asked him about, you know, why he felt he was able to run through so many tacklers, would-be tacklers. And he said, I've been working on the weights. Johnny Parker said he squats three sets of five with 385 pounds, and that's why he's got the strength to run through those would-be tackles like he has so far this season. They say that he makes Rambo look like a campfire girl. He's that tough. Back to throw Sims on third and two, and Morris can't hang on. He would have had the first down. He caught the ball about a yard short of the first down marker. Fourth down coming up. That can hurt you sometimes, Hank. You miss a game, and some of those things don't happen automatically. And there was Morris not able to make the catch. Well, also, it, it, it involves the efficiency, and also sometimes there's a drop in endurance, too, because playing in a game and, and uh, practicing, two different things. Raul Allegra will attempt this field goal. This is the guy that Bill Parcells is very confident with. He's 2 of 2. Last week hit 28, 29-yard field goals. This will be a 44-yarder. Jeff Rutledge to hold. For the tie. Got plenty of distance on it. And he got it. And we're all even at three. So Allegra, the former Indianapolis Colts kicker, has found a new job with New York and may have solved what has been a perplexing problem, and that is the place kicking. Don't forget now, college football next Saturday on CBS, two Heisman Trophy candidates. Lorenzo White of Michigan State, Jim Harbaugh of Michigan will go head to head. They will be going at 2.30 Eastern. We understand that Lorenzo White in that loss yesterday to Iowa sustained a knee injury, and uh, he is questionable coming into that game. Jim Harbaugh, the coach's son. His dad, the coach at Western Michigan, and uh, he plays like a coach on the field. That's 2.30 Eastern next Saturday here on CBS. Well, we're all even at three now, as Lomax will uh, try to do something about that when he comes back in. 
Williams, the man who just tied it up, a 44-yard field goal. He was a very efficient kicker, Hank, for the Colts, and then he pulled a hamstring and never did get the strength back, but seemingly now he's back on track. Native of Mexico, went up to the state of Washington to school, transferred to Texas, where he's an outstanding student at the University of Texas. Jazz Fox will bring it up. run across the 35 to the 37 yard line. Cass Fox, who was drafted in the fourth round by the Chiefs this year, cut, and now in the last two games has been playing with the Cardinals as Perry Williams made the stop. You talk about being under control. It doesn't look like he's running very fast, but he's picking his way. He's running with his head up and his eyes open and look at him pick his way. And the only way you can do that is if you keep your head up and the eyes open. And he got a lot more out of that return than I ever thought he would when the play started. You're always talking about running with your eyes. You gotta run with your eyes. That's right, you put your head down. And it's like running through a tunnel. From the 37, first down for the big red. Well, Matt can't find anybody and of a sudden, he disappears. Leonard Marshall, Jim Burke, George Martin, all of them there on the play. Loss inside the 35 to the 34. Watch the ground level pressure here now. Look at the look at the push by Marshall, number 70. He's going to the outside. He got Sally coming up the middle, number 78, and they put put him in the vice, and finally get him tackled on the play. Second and 13. What happened, Hank? Is that? Offensive line was just shoved back in his face that time. Don't have any operating room. Second down now. 13 yards to go. Earl Farrell is dumped short of the 35-yard line, and that's Lawrence Taylor with a very impressive tackle. That's one of the first few times they've they've run a play on a quick count. Uh, Gary, and I think they have to do that a lot more, and especially on first down when they throw the ball to keep the defense a little bit off balance because the defense is awesome. Boy, they're murdered. See, the Giants are the top team against the rush tied with the Chicago Bears. So many things good about Taylor, but I think maybe it's his intimidating speed that impresses you as much as anything. Well, the great thing about Taylor is that all the other linebackers are so good now, too, with Banks playing like he is, it's hard to attack any one particular area. On a third down, Lomax to J.T. Smith. That's not going to be enough for the first down. He caught the ball two yards short of the first down. Perry Williams over there to be sure he didn't make the first down. That's a bad play because you ought to know where you have to go to get the necessary yardage for the first down. He obviously didn't know, and he got Perry Williams turned around. He had his knees turned to the outside, had a perfect opportunity to take him deeper and make the play and get the first down, but he didn't. Hank, he's the only experienced wide receiver they have, so if he doesn't spot that, they're in trouble. Yeah, you see, he was disturbed with himself once he was tackled because he knew he didn't run the pattern deep enough. So the Cardinals will give up the football. McConkey back for the Giants at the 15-yard line. Very short punt. From the 25, McConkey has the seam, and he advances out to the 42. So McConkey just glad to be back with the Giants. He was a favorite of Bill Parcells. It was a very difficult cut to let him go, be picked up by the Packers, and uh, he feels he, he's gotten a new lease on life. I tell you something, Gary, when you're playing on a team that's one and three and go to a team that's three and one, I don't care what the team is, you've got to be happy. We're in Bush Stadium in St. Louis. We're in the second quarter of play with a 3-3 tie. I'm Gary Bender along with Hank Stram. Field goals by Lee in the first quarter and Allegra in the second quarter. That's where we stand now. As Joe Morris on a first down carries to the 43-yard line. Chris Godfrey that time, the right guard was pulling on the play, was a little bit too high, used the wrong shoulder, and as a result, the defensive person dropped off and made the tackle. He didn't do anything right. That doesn't sound like he did anything right on that play. That's why he didn't, because that's why they didn't make any yardage. <laughs> There's never any mystery with the why what things happen. You got to block and His mother likes him, though, Hank. Oh, sure. I like him too, but he just made a bad play in the last on the last run. Stacy Robinson couldn't hang on anyway. Al 
Baker puts some pressure up front. Again, game two of our doubleheader, the Broncos and the Cowboys. Those of you in the New York area will not see the Sega game due to the NFL blackout rule. We mentioned earlier Danny White will not play, and Dorsett is questionable with the knee injury. But when you got a guy like Herschel Walker, that kind of salves some wounds. Third down seven now for the Giants. 3-3 our score. The way the defense right now is, it looks like maybe something in the middle would be appropriate, uh, Gary. We'll see what they do. Way to go up the middle, and Bubba Baker got up and spotted it down. Baker checked in this year in the best shape of his career. He came in at about 20 pounds lighter. Yeah, he let about 20 pounds out of the balloon, and it makes a big difference. He's coming off the ball a lot better, plus the fact that he's playing on the right side uh, where he's able to get a better pass rush on the quarterback. Remember that rookie year when he had 23 sacks? inside the 10 no return on it he'll start at the nine Greg Lasker the rookie from Arkansas down there almost as fast as the punt Bill Parcells delightful time we had yesterday with him Hank we, we would have talked all night long as we discussed his team for a couple of hours I thought one of the more interesting things is how he built this team looking at linebackers he's very particular about what kind of football player he wants at that spot well, it's obvious he likes big people, strong people, good range, white people. And I uh, got a little news for you. Every coach in the league is looking for that kind of a player. <laughs> but as you can see, he's improved every oh, yeah. year. Yeah. But uh, what he said was only two players in the college draft this year, a linebacker he was interested in. He and, got one of them. And his feeling about today's game has been justified because he said he's very concerned about playing the Cardinals. And I asked him, would you rather play a team that's uh, three and one or one and or zero oh and four. He said, "No question about it. I'd rather play against a team that's three and one, because you never know what to expect from a team that's zero oh and four. Well, he said he wasn't happy with this team. They got behind last week, seventeen to nothing to the Saints. Came back, and here they find themselves even at three, as we come to a second and five. What? But uh, I, I think the big thing is, I think he's very happy about his defensive group. He's just not happy enough with his offense. Him. On a second and five, Lomax to Farrell, and Farrell going to make it across the 15 to the 16 yard line. So it comes to a third down for the Cardinals. The way that, that New York Giant defense plays, it'd be good if you had a could play with 12 people against them. Off. <laughs> there. Right. Looks like they've got 12 out there sometimes. Yeah, that's right. It? You have to keep counting to make sure they don't have 12. I think it's so interesting is they in the draft this year have added some new faces who down the road is going to be impacting the Giants team. If they, they, they play the Canadian League, they make them play 11 against 12, I think, for that defense they have. Third and two. Well, Max on the double pump. And momentarily, the catch was made, but not long enough. J.T. Smith, so that's going to ring up fourth down. Pretty good coverage on that one. Had to force it a little. And now the Cardinals have to punt again. The nice thing about the play, Gary, he moved the pocket. He had no rush whatsoever. And I think probably as the game progresses, we might see a lot more of that kind of a pass from the St. Louis Cardinals to avoid that balanced rush of the New York Giants. This time, it appears as though the Giants have an excellent field position. 11 left in the first quarter. Kaku is a very good friend of Phil Sims. Phil is delighted to have him back in the fold. And the injury to Collins, they have Makaki. There's a big rush put on. Makaki at the Giants' 48-yard line. Will be stopped short of the 46. Coming up at halftime on the NFL today, Brandon Dick Vermeil with scores and highlights. And then the question is, can Herschel Walker take the Dallas Cowboys back to the future? It's all coming up at halftime on the NFL today. That was only a 35-yard punt, but it was almost a lot shorter. He got very close to blocking the punt. Had he taken a better angle and, and uh, head for a spot in front, about a yard and a half in front of the foot, he had to block that kick. He being Robbie Jones, who's an outstanding special teams player. Back to throw is Sims. And Bobby.
Bobby Johnson, the intended receiver at the 27 yard line. Over there, depending on the play, was Lionel Washington. And also some help from a linebacker. Brings up second down. Rick DiBernardo, the linebacker from Notre Dame that time, got back there in good shape. Let's look at this play a moment ago, Hank. See how closely they came. There's Robbie Jones. You see, had he spread out and head for a spot about a yard and a half in front of where he kicked the ball, he'd have blocked the kick. It was too deep that time and too high. Sims is 3 of 10 now in this game for 42 yards. Second down, 10. Joe Morris slants it across the 45 to the 43. Freddie Joe Nunn made the stop. You made a good point about Joe Morris yesterday, Hank, because at 5'7", it's tough to see him running behind that offensive line. Well, we always liked you know, the short uh, running backs with our team in Kansas City because all of our linemen were so big, 6'7", 6 6'8", 6 6 6. and as a result, all of our little backs, Warren McVay, Mike Garrett, Bobby Holmes, uh, it was hard to find them. All you, did, all you saw was the top of their hat, and if they got, had the guards pulling, why the defensive people could never find them. Scored through there, third and five. Him, trying to make connections with Solomon Miller at the 25-yard line. Again, Bubba Baker putting some good pressure on from that defensive end spot. Let's look at some of them. Watch the pressure on Sims. Gallo Galloway is coming up the middle, and watch Baker come from the outside and push him in the squeeze that time. Right about the time he was trying to get rid of the football. It wasn't a squeeze of affection either. No, I wasn't. Vendetta will punt. So the Giants now had somebody offside. They're going to stop the play. On the near side, Greg Lasker had already left, was headed into the Cardinal side of the line of scrimmage. So they had to stop the play. Lasker's been down there so quickly on these punts. This time he left prematurely. Five yard penalty and the Cardinals, with 3-11 left in this first half, will have Sikahima just outside the 10-yard line to receive the punt. Ball start, number 46. Offense, downfield, contacted the red jersey. Five yards, fourth down. See if he tries to kick it out of bounds to his left again, or whether he tries to kick an elevator ball, kick it high, and make the defensive back or the receiver uh, catch it, and perhaps maybe force him with a fumble. It high. Let it hit. Sikahima gets away from it, and the Giants going to down it inside the five. Very fine execution that time by Lambetta. So it's going to be a long ways to go for the Cardinals. Lomax and the Cardinals will start from the five yard line as Gary Reasons was down there to down the football for New York. You know, I think a lot of people are surprised by the way this game has been played so far, but really and truly, uh, Gary, watching the, the St. Louis Cardinals practice and uh, talking to them individually, there's a lot of determination and a very strong feeling that they have to, you know, start making something happen. As I mentioned, they all talked about the fact that, you know, the Giants uh, they ridiculed their effort last year and that they quit and that kind of thing. Sometimes, you know, that kind of motivation can be very dangerous when you come into a game expected to win like the Giants coming into this game. Is that bulletin board material? Oh, no question about it. Lomax coming out, throwing from the end zone, hits Earl Farrell, and Farrell is very close to the first down. We'll see if he had the first down, but first, let's go back for an update. Here's Brent. Okay, we've got an update on the Washington Redskins. Jay Schrader throws this touchdown into the end zone. They were looking for George Rogers. He hits Art Monk. Extra point is good off the toe of Mark Mosley, and now the Skins have gone ahead of New Orleans, 14 to 6. Let's go back to Garrett. Thank you, Brent. Of course, the Redskins will get one game lead over these Giants. Unbeaten. It was a first down on that catch by Farrell just across the 15 yard line. This time, a couple of yards, and that's all. As Farrell runs into Lawrence Taylor, it'll bring up a second down. Watch the surge right up the middle. And really, either one of these teams really have, have really dominated the line of scrimmage. It's really been kind of a taffy pull up front. 
a taffy pull or a standoff, whatever you want to call it. We have the two-minute warning. It's all even at three. Hank, at the start of the year, Jimmy the Greek picked these Cardinals to make it to the Super Bowl. We were in Philadelphia last week, and tied in John Spagnola. The Eagles said, which year? Well, they're playing good today. Remember, they got 12 more games left, so they could wind up... 12 and 4. <laughs> well, they're even right now, and that's got to be encouraging. They haven't been this position yet this year. No, you're absolutely right, and I think most more teams lose games than they get beat, and that's what the situation here today is. They don't want to lose the game. Second down now. Eight yards to go. Lomax trying to hit J.T. Smith at the 25. Crowd not happy with that development. Good coverage at time, and it's going to bring up third down and eight. Neil Lomax, a very proud father of a son three weeks ago, Nicholas Ryan. He has uh, heard the Boo Birds. And uh, what is that? It's not a very big step to the outhouse sometimes. You can play very well, and then all of a sudden people are very dissatisfied with it. Well, you can't worry about things you can't control. You can't control things that they say about you or write about you. You just got to hang in there, keep your feet in the fire, and play. That's what he's doing right now. Third down and eight. Collins has all the confidence in the world. And this time he's on target. Stump Mitchell. Mitchell across the 35 to the 40, but there's a penalty flag. Well, they dropped the flag, Gary. It's got to be a holding penalty against St. Louis. Let's see what they call. And that's exactly what has plagued the Cardinals all year long, Hank. A big play, and they seemingly get him called back all the time. Well, look at Gene Stallings on the sideline. He's very upset, and justifiably so. But he said yesterday, he said, every time we have a big play, there's some kind of a penalty. We stop ourselves. Something happens, and there's a great demonstration of it right there in the last play. Holding offense number 64. Half the distance to the goal. Third down. Hank to amplify on that a little bit. I think Gene's almost paranoid about it. He is I'm talking to him yesterday in the dressing room. He says, I almost look for a penalty flag when we make a big play. He said, I know I don't handle the officials well. He says, I've got to learn how Tom Landry does it because he says, I have probably brought some of this wrath down around my own ears, but he is really paranoid about this. Look at look at the wax dripping from his ears, the officials. He's melting the wax in his ears. He's giving a lot of hot air, isn't he? <laughs> Did you see it dripping from his ears? We're laughing, but I'll tell you, Gene Stallings is third and 17. What a costly penalty that was. But Jimmy Rosser, he was giving him a little shot. In the end zone, Lomax looks like the same play again. This time, Mitchell can't hang on. It'll bring up fourth down. Taylor defended on the play. Boy, what a difference. They had it out, Hank, at the 40. Now they're going to have to punt from the end zone. I don't know. It's. Uh, I think sometimes when you're not going well, Hank, uh, you almost look and expect those things to happen. To well, you. it's the nature of the beast. People relate to past experiences, you know, and you get in a critical situation and something like this happened, and everybody said, well, here we go again. Yeah, the same exactly. old stuff, you yeah. know. And they use it as an excuse to lose rather than a reason to win. What was that that Parcel started about? You have a rotation of excuses you can go to. You've got to get away from it. That's a question. Evan gets it off very effectively. At the 48. And McConkey eventually is dropped at the 45 yard line of St. Louis. Ron Monaco over there to make the stop. The Giants have not, continuity wise, gotten their offense on track. They have scored three points, as have the Cardinals. But you can see here, other than the field goal, every other occasion they've had to punt it away. Three plays, four, 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 and three. As you know, Bill was talking yesterday about we've made some big plays, but he wants the meat and potatoes, Hank, the sustained drives where you're blowing people off the line of scrimmage and, and really getting after you. Yeah, you have to get to a stage with your football team where you can take the ball and stuff it at the opposition and have it for 10 or 12 plays on a, bit, on a sustained march. They haven't been able to do that. They're getting a big play here and a big play there. Uh, you know, that's like building on sand instead of rock. First down now. With a minute 30 left in the first half. Knocks it off to Galbert. He got away from E.J. Jr. And he'll get out of bounds, stop the clock, and is very close to the first down. E.J. Jr. had him corralled back there, and Galbert gave him the old slip of the hip and went by him. 
that's what you like about Galbraith. It's not just his catching ability, but in the open field. Oh, he's got such great feet. You know, as I mentioned, he's got feet like Mike Garrett, hands like Otis Taylor, and he's big and strong. And uh, once he gets in the open, he's very hard to tackle one on one. He's a Missouri native. He played at Fulton, Missouri, before playing at the University of Missouri. Second down now. Three yards to go. Galbraith has the first down as we approach 1.15 left in the first half. There was a great demonstration of tipping a play, uh, Gary. Anytime Galbraith is even with the tailback or with Sims, they're going to run the ball. Now he's ahead of them, you see, and they're going to throw the ball. That's normally what their tendencies are. Galbraith gets a block and converts it into yardage inside the 15. That was Godfrey who came back. Chris Godfrey, 61, who threw a very key block on the play, springing Galbraith for a 13-yard pickup. Yeah, we talked about Godfrey missing a block a little bit uh, earlier in the game on a, on a trap block. Uh, this time he was leading on the screen and really threw a beautiful block downfield. And so a timeout called now by the Giants, stopping the clock. They had the ball at the 14-yard line. There's Godfrey. He played in the United States Football League two years with Michigan and collegiately at the University of Michigan, where he went to three Rose Bowls for Bo Schembechler. Time again, Brent and Dick Vermeil will have scores and highlights. A story about Herschel Walker. And of course, there's some talk that uh, Dorsett will not play today, so they'll have to rely on Walker maybe once again, as they did here Monday night when they defeated the Cardinals. That's coming up at halftime. Well, that penalty comes back to haunt you even more now, Hank. You're trying to stem losing your tie at half instead of uh, having to get up, up the ball a while to go and punt it out of there will haunt you all game long. They seemingly always rear their ugly head somewhere. Well, the worst thing about that is, uh, Gary, you know, you go along and go along and you're doing the same thing consistently and all of a sudden, you know, they call you on, on a play and uh, it's the same kind of a play and the same thing you've been doing for, for maybe 15 or 16 or 17 plays. So you never know what's going to come. Giants have two timeouts remaining now. At the 14-yard line, first down. Sims with all kinds of time. And almost picked up. That's Mack. Sims that time had all day to throw the football. Yeah, there was no rush whatsoever, and he was trying. He looked to his left. Washington's in a bump and run here. And uh, gives him a shot. Bobby Johnson gives him a shot to line of scrimmage and wind up in his own defense. Why Cedric Mack, number 47, he's looking at the ball, trying to find a receiver at the same time. There he's backpedaling now. The ball swung. He leaps up into the air, way over the top of both defensive back and uh, the receiver. Second down from the 14. 52 seconds left in the first half. Sims, Stacey Robinson, and he didn't get it. Official right on top of it. Sims obviously did not agree. As Stacy Robinson could not come up with it. Boy, he had a one-on-one. -on -one. That's exactly what you like in this situation with uh, Wayne Smith on the right corner. Good protection. Throws it. He goes in and out. He hasn't beaten on the play. The ball is a little short and a little low, and it goes right through there for a two-point play basket. <laughs> Wayne Smith. Obviously very pleased he didn't come up with that because he had Smith turned around. Wayne Smith is a very fast guy and great on up patterns. But any kind of an individual move, you make one move and back out to the other side. He just looked at those kind of plays. Third down from the 14-yard line. Comes over the middle, and Lionel Washington had a crack at an interception. Bobby Johnson, the intended receiver, and some very good defensive effort by the Cardinals. They dodged different potential touchdown passes and they're going to make the Giants settle for a field goal. Well, you're talking about dodging a bullet. they got to be happy about this. Come out of here with just three points if provided he makes the field goal rather than seven. Raul Allegra, who earlier booted one 44 yards, this time will attempt a 31-yarder. Very quickly, 
and he's got it. And he is four of four since joining the Giants. And Bill Parcells said he solved that place kicking situation. He was the third kicker this year. Nika Nogas yesterday said, Coach, I guarantee if they're going to score, they're not going to get seven. They're going to have to kick field goals. And so far, uh, he's been very prophetic. You see what happens in the second half. Of course, I think the, the Cardinals have played a very emotional game in the first half. Whether they can sustain that emotion in the second half remains to be seen. And you wonder how the Giants will come out if they did like last week when they just shut the Saints down. Next Saturday on CBS, we'll be in that magnificent stadium in Ann Arbor, Michigan, as the Wolverines will play host to Michigan State. Last year, Michigan won this game very convincingly, 31 to nothing. But Lorenzo White and the Spartans would like to change that. There is some question as to whether White will play. He's having some knee problems after that loss yesterday to Iowa. And Jim Harbaugh, who seemingly never makes a mistake for Bo Schimbeckler's club, lead the Wolverines in that game. It all starts 2.30 Eastern here on CBS. The Wolverines unbeaten, ranked fourth in the country. 6-3 now, the Giants. Game of field goal. Here is quick kick this time. Chaz Fox has it. And Fox will be dropped at the 23-yard line. Pepper Johnson, a rookie linebacker out of Ohio State, making the stop number 52 for the Giants. Understand that Joe Bostic, the right side offensive guard for the Cardinals, having some knee difficulties, some fluid on his knee. They took him in, they'll look at him, and will upgrade his status in the second half. Well, Hank, with uh, 35 seconds left here at the 25. I think you got to be careful, you know, that you don't make a mistake here trying to get something right before the half in 35 seconds and provide the Giants or the opposition with an opportunity to make another big play. What they do has to be a high percentage kind of a thing. There it is. They'll, throw, they'll run a screen or a draw or something short, but they're not going to take a chance of throwing an interception to provide the Giants with another opportunity to get another seven or three points before the half. Mitchell, the intended receiver, that'll stop the clock with 31 seconds. scrimmage the 25 yard line St. Louis thus far two of nine on third down Stallings working the officials a little bit on the sideline again because I've got to get better at it there's a penalty flag is Gene Chilton. He's the rookie out of Texas. Plays both a center and a guard spot for the Cardinals. So they'll back up inside the 20-yard line. Yeah, I don't know how that I don't know how that happens because he's playing right next to the center, watching the ball, getting a look at the ball. Uh, I don't know how he would jump uh, offside, especially in this kind of a situation on a pass block. And he's the center on top of that. He should know the snap count, huh? Right. The training. He was their fourth-round draft pick. The call <laughs> you know, you've heard about the refrigerator and the, they want to reset the game clock. They took a couple of seconds off, but Chilton had a nice uh, nickname. They called him the Coke Machine. Everybody's getting these new labels. Yeah, the only the only one that really sticks, though, however, is the one they give the first guy, like the refrigerator. Everything else doesn't mean much. They've got the freezer. They've got them all, don't they? That's right. It helps when you have ability to go with the nickname. That's right. It helps when you win big. You win every Sunday. That makes a big difference, too. So they put the two seconds back on. Really academic. The Cardinals like to just really get into the dressing room now. They're backed up deep in their own territory inside the 20 of the second down and 14. Not very many options available now. First down, out to the 40. A conservative call and a, a very wise call under the circumstances, and surprisingly picked up that much yardage. Yeah, that's you know as I mentioned, you got to you got to play, use high percentage things, make sure you don't make a mistake, and in the process, if you can get it down there close enough, kick a field goal, that's great. But you're not going to take a chance of giving the ball to the opposition. Kenny Hill getting up, and uh, he sustained some type of an injury at the 45. 
coming out. One of the trainers look at him. There he is. He's uh, limping. Bill Parcells called him my little genius from Yale. Playing in that strong safety spot. Well, they'll check Kenny over. You know, earlier today on the NFL Today, we had an interview with Roger Clemens, and I'm sure Bill Parcells would have been very interested in it. He is a big Red Sox fan, and the reason, Hank, is he said his dad, who he loved very much, was an obnoxious Yankee fan. He says it's the only thing that he ever thought his dad was obnoxious about. It drove him away from the Yankees, and he became a Red Sox fan because he felt that was the only team that could beat the Yankees. But it's hard to imagine that the coach of the New York Giants would be <laughs> anything but a Yankee fan. Isn't that right? <laughs> uh, that's right. What if the Mets get in? What happens then? Well, you change flags. <laughs> with one timeout remaining. They have it at the 39. 6-3. New York with the lead. 22 seconds left in the first half. Here's Mitchell. And he's going to get out of bounds and lose the yard. The crowd is uh, an unhappy crowd. It didn't start today, Hank. It started Monday night and it's carried over. And this was a team that last year got out of the shoot very effectively. They won three and dropped one, then things started to fall apart, and they've lost six straight going back to last year. They've lost so many people, and of course, if you're going to be a good football team, you got to win in spite of that, and they just haven't been able to do it. Duncan down, and going through, pressure, getting the ball off to Stump Mitchell, and they get two or three yards back, it'll come to a third down. Martin got through there like he was in their huddle. That's right. He knew something, didn't he? He now sure did. Now another timeout. St. Louis will exercise their last timeout. So with seven seconds now, Gene Stallings doesn't have a lot of options. Here was a man who played for the Bear, Bear Bryant, later coached with him, 14 years an assistant coach with Tom Landry. Said he learned from Landry, Hank, organizational ability and poise that uh, you have to earn the respect of your players. Well, you know, talking to uh, Gene Stallings, if you close your eyes, you're thinking you're, you think you're talking to Bear Bryant. Yep. Uh, the only difference really is that you can understand Gene a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good story because I was doing a game in Alabama. I went on the tower with the late Bear Bryant and I honestly could not understand a word he was saying, but I was so impressed I acted like I did. Well, the thing about the Bear was you had to understand if he wanted you to know something, he'd tell you you'd understand him. But when he didn't want to, why well, then, of course, he'd mumble and after you got through you scratch your head and try to figure out what he said but you're afraid to ask again right <laughs> that's right yeah <laughs> but he did sound like that and uh, I guess when you're around the guy that long it really rubs off Gene of course was in that uh, the Junction City game remember down there in Texas where he took them all the pit and see who could survive the football they're gonna, at Texas a and they're gonna put three guys on one side and try to throw the ball down deep and hope maybe they get a big play or a pass interference or something he goes down, drop at the 40, and uh, with two seconds now, we'll start it up, and we have come to the end of this first half of play. So it's been a battle of field goals thus far. Lee kicking one to give the Cardinals the lead. Allegra coming back to kick two in a row for the Giants. 